Thank you so much for joining us today. I am privileged and honored to have a friend of mine, Christy Thomas, come and um, let me interview her. And I just ask, just pray that this would encourage you and let you see what a masterpiece you are and that God has a beautiful purpose and plan for your life. So, okay, first off, uh, when did you, well, give a background on yourself. Just the, I, okay, so she, you have four books. Yeah. And the latest one is the Mother Son Journal, which I have and Cooper and I have been going through. Oh, love it. And uh, we do it in the car rider line or before we leave on our bikes. It's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. And there's a place for people to, the moms to journal prayers and the kids to write pictures or write notes on um, just the devotional for each day. So, okay, go ahead and share a little bit more. Uh, sure. Sense. Well, I am, I live in uh, Alberta, Canada, which is kind of just east of the Rocky Mountains in Canada. So it is lovely here right now. <laughs> we are jealous. <laughs> Trees are just starting to bud. So yeah. there's nothing, you know, very green about anything right now, but I love spring. And I have three boys and one husband. And I used to work as a children's ministry director at my church. So I worked there for most of about 12 years. I took some time off when I had each kid, but then I went back and continued doing that job until three years ago when I finished so that I could do more writing. And now I also homeschool my kids. So that kind of a lot. came out as well. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Okay. So you're writing, you're going for your dreams. When did you first realize you had a passion for writing and um, just writing books? Uh, when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm one of those people that, so here's what happened to me. I wrote all the time when I was a kid. I remember my friend telling me, you were always telling me stories. And, and I remember telling stories into my little tape recorder and I it was like stories about little girls and dogs and <laughs> stuff like that. And the writing stories. And, but then the last story I wrote, wrote was in ninth grade. And then I decided that I really loved science instead. So I didn't write another story for 20 years. Oh, wow. And not a single one and nothing popped out. I didn't care. It wasn't really something that I was interested in. I did lots of writing in my children's ministry job. I would write, I wrote a couple skits and I wrote newsletters and emails and curriculum, but I didn't write anything that wasn't a Bible story. Right. And then one day I was sitting at camp, like a family camp with my kids. And I just had this story pop into my mind. And mm. I was like, what is this? And I sat there and I skipped the chapel and I was just writing and I'm like, I wrote a story. And so that was not the first Quinn story. It's a Quinn story that will probably never be in a book. <laughs> it wasn't great. But then the next one that I wrote with the same character ended up being that book you see behind me right there. And oh, then good. I, oh, you have them behind you. I was going to show them later on my screen. Yeah. So then I, and then I wrote Quinn's Promise Rock and have been kind of writing stories for a lot, for Hmm. How long has it been now? In the last five years or so. And a lot of them are just sitting on my computer. They're stories that I, I loved and I worked on and then kind of didn't have anything to do with. But I think I grew through them and I learned how to write a better story. And so those were, that's kind of what happened to me. Wrote a lot when I was a kid. I even like got picked to go to young authors conferences. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, like out of all the kids in my grade, I was the one that was picked two years in a row. But then just didn't write. Because I love I science. Love I have a science degree. Background. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the questions we're sometimes asked in Hope Writers, the group we're part of, is what were you passionate about as a kid? And it's just, I hope this encourages kids right now, and maybe even some moms out there, right? That that thing that you held in your heart that you were so passionate about, um, that's part of who God made you to be. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, I've started writing, going for my dreams, kind of on the side. I haven't gotten mm -hmm. to where I published any, but... That's just an encouragement to you out there that keep writing. If that's something you're passionate about, keep going with it. Don't get discouraged. Some of the things you'll write, you're just kind of getting it out and practicing, kind of like learning to ride a bike, but mm -hmm. just keep doing it. Keep going for it. And I want to encourage kids out there, um, even try going for a dream and maybe even publishing, even if it's for your family. I just think use those gifts. So, all right. Now, did you struggle with any lies in your head as you began to pursue your passions? Or even as a kid, did you deal with any lies or self-doubt? I don't honestly remember dealing with a lot of like lies and self-doubt, like with regard to this when I was a kid. Um, definitely as an adult, lots of, this is not good enough. This right. is, 
nobody cares what you have to say, lots of those kind of lies. But as a kid, it was mostly just I was writing for myself. And my teachers were really encouraging, encouraging, right? So it didn't feel like, oh, well, I felt like, oh, I'm good at this. Like, I, <laughs> I can do this. So um, it wasn't until I was an adult that a lot of that started to creep in. Okay, so kids, even moms, tuck that away and just remember it. So when that time comes and you feel like there's opposition or self-doubt, just keep pushing. Look, you have four books. I love yeah, it. Five. <laughs> well, I've got another one coming out next year. So. Yay! Are you going to give us a sneak peek on the theme or title? Sure, yeah. It's called Fruitful 100 Family Experiences on Growing in the Fruit of the Spirit. Oh, I love that. So that's one not so much for kids, but for parents and kids. Yeah, so it's not just for moms and sons this time, oh, <laughs> but good. just for your whole family to do together. Oh, yes. I love that. All, I look forward to that. It's all based on Jesus. So okay. just seeing the fruit of the Spirit as evidence to Jesus. That. I look forward to it. So and a little something about me. I actually have some granddaughters. So I have a son in love. Um, he was 18 when I got married and granddaughters. So I'm already excited. I started thinking, oh, I think for Christmas, I'm going to order the Queen books. And then I look forward to the others for them. So thank you oh. so much for using your gifts. Now, I didn't get a chance to ask this beforehand. And I think you kind of already answered the question. But did you ever, I don't get the impression you did, but did you ever struggle with grades or any sort of learning challenge? Or um, I didn't struggle in that area. Um, yeah, like oh, or shyness, <laughs> shyness. Yes, definitely an introvert. Like when I was in grade six, we had our teacher like gave us all like silly names, like who was going to be who on the team. And I was going to be the spy <laughs> because there was one time I distinctly remember sitting at my tech, my desk with the book and everybody went to gym. And I was like, I'm just going to keep reading. <laughs> and they didn't notice. <laughs> so okay. to be honest, the, the lie, the struggle that I've always had is that nobody notices me nobody cares my, about my opinion nobody wants to read my words oh, nobody so values me because you know that happened that kind of thing happened to me a lot where people would just leave and they'd be like oh oh christy like <laughs> or i go to a restaurant and the, the waitress would not even notice me to take my order or oh. stuff like that so that was definitely that's the lie that i've struggled with it's just okay. the feeling of invisibility in my life and i think for those watching it's so clear that you're I mean, to me, just so beautiful and noticeable. So mm -hmm. you push past those fears and those lies and just kept going and spoke truth to yourself. Did you have anyone in your life that would, was one of the people that influenced you and was speaking truth to help you overcome that lie? A lot of it happened when I was an adult and I worked at the church and I finally kind of settled in. There was about six to eight of us on staff and I started, you know, I would say something and they would listen. And I was like, oh, they value my opinion. Yeah. And just that feeling of, you know, I was able to grow comfortable with them and share my ideas and sometimes argue with them. And <laughs> through that safe place where I could grow, I did grow <laughs> and kind of became a lot more confident in who I am. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like for it's different for everybody. Either it's in childhood or it's in adulthood or both. Mm -hmm. And then there's a really great time. It feels so good to push past those lies. I know for me, mm -hmm. um, let's see. So yours is just continuing to push past and realize you do have self-value or self-worth. Mm -hmm. So if you could go back in time and tell yourself something, like just one of those kids now that you love, your own child, what is it that you'd say to encourage them? Like two, well, as if it was your own self, like just speaking yeah. truth. I would just say that you are seen and you are loved and you, your opinion is valuable and I want to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you feel like nobody cares about you or nobody is not, not, nobody cares about you. I knew that people loved me, but then when you feel like nobody cares about what you have to say, um, they do, they really do. And you, it just takes some courage to step up and, and say it. Yes. You do have value. There's something that there is, I don't think, I know there's something valuable in every soul. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just like this nugget of gold. And, and I just believe that about yourself, whatever your age. So um, let's see, define it's, you can do all or just one of them, but just find true courage, strength, or true beauty. Or all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, some tough questions. I think that I'm thinking about beauty recently. I think beauty is letting yourself be seen. 
Oh, I like that. Who you really are, like letting your real self out. Um, I, you know, that for me, that was a really hard thing, right? I purposely sometimes even just tried to not really be seen. Um, and so now it's for me, when I feel beautiful is when I feel like I'm really just being myself. Oh, I love that. That's similar to something that DJ said in the last interview. So, all right. Can you share any memories you may have had of being criticized or teased that affected you? I know that you said you were shy. So was there any thing that someone did? I know my son talks about being teased at school and it's just, sometimes it's good to know that people we admire, people making a great difference have dealt with that too. Oh, I'm going to, I'll tell you about this one time. <laughs> it might make me cry. It still impacts me. So I was sitting in the, the computer lab because, you know, way back in the day, we had computer labs mm -hmm. in junior high. And um, I was sitting there at lunch doing my thing. I, maybe you're typing up a story. I don't know. And these three boys were sitting behind beside me. They were from my class. They were playing some computer game or something. And for some reason, I have no idea why they started chanting, Christy's ugly, Christy's fat, Christy's no. ugly. And I was like, it took me so long to forgive them oh. because it impacted me so deeply thinking i'm ugly i'm fat That's no one's ever gonna look at me or love me to be honest i was kind of surprised when i got married <laughs> um oh. i just was i thought that i wasn't worthy of attention oh, so no. you can see that it, kind of a lot of that fits together right yeah. in, in somebody i think we're all ward again ward as in ward <laughs> that sounds funny um in some of the areas that we actually shine and then mm. he tries to silence us or slow us down. So push past that out there. Whatever people have told you, you're made in the image of God in a wonderful way. So mm -hmm. um, so what, why is it important? This kind of may be obvious, but I think it's good to share stories. I love the power of story. Why is it important to get over fear of what others think? I think it's because God has put something in you, like you were saying about this gold nugget. And if you are always worried about what other people are thinking, it's going to be really hard to let, let that little nugget out, right? right? There's something that God has put in you. He has put his fingerprint on you in some way. Mm -hmm. There's something that only you are here in this world for. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let it shine, who's going to no. do it? Yeah, you robbed the world unintentionally of a color that no one else has. Yeah, really and that's like why every, thing to say. <laughs> why every human has value and why we care yeah. about the people yeah. who live on the other side of the world who are dying because they have the fingerprint of God on them too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you don't want to rob the world of their what God has coming from them as well. Yes. The yes. gold nugget that they have to share. Okay. I love this one. I had to think of some fun. I'm not naturally <laughs> funny. I'm fun, but I'm not funny. But this is something that my it's like a dinner conversation question sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you could be an animal for the day, what would you be and why? Or if you could have a superpower for a day, what would it be? <laughs> okay, I don't know if this totally qualifies as a superpower, but you know in Mary Poppins where she goes around and she just like snaps her finger and everything gets clean? Yes. <laughs> that is the superpower that I want. For Cleaning a day. the house, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree. would love that. Except then to be there the next day. So maybe invent a machine. That's what I do with my day. That it would snap his fingers every day and my house would be clean. That's right. Or, or that like spoonful of sugar, whatever it is she's giving them. <laughs> That's what I'll do with my superpower. I will invent. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Of all of your successes, or it could be one or many, what are you most proud of? Uh, the Quinn books, to be honest, because... Mm -hmm. When I first wrote Quinn's Promise Rock, so that was the first one I wrote. I only wrote that story for a while and I sent it out to various agents and editors and I actually had an agent tell me like, this is not worth, like, this is cute, but this is not, couldn't be a series, so I'm not interested. And um, I just had a lot of um, no's, lots of no's. Here's how many people did you send it out to before you had a yes? Well, I don't remember exactly. This was like five years ago, probably. But I definitely sent it out to about 15, 20 people. Most of them didn't say anything. Um, and then I had a couple of like actual no's. And then, and then I went to a conference and I talked to an agent and I just felt like everything within me was like, don't say anything, just keep to your corner. And then I was like, can I send you my story? Yeah. And, and he's like, sure. And so 
um, I took his advice. You know, we'd had a meeting for about 10 minutes and I took his advice and I wrote a few more stories to go with it and I sent them all to him. And within like two weeks, they had signed me and they're like, we see a lot of potential in you. And yes. yes. So for me, it took me going to that conference in the first place, making that meeting with the agent. Um, I wasn't originally going to meet with him. I was planning to meet with some other people and I changed at the last minute. I was like, no, I should talk to him. And for me to just say, can I email you? So it took like all my courage to do that. Yes. And it's because of that, that I have these books today. That helps me. I have some tucked away, actually many. So <laughs> just to try to start. Okay. So let, in closing, what is the most, or one piece of advice, or how long, I never will limit anyone or pieces of advice that you would <laughs> give those who may doubt themselves. Mm, I would say the listen to the voices that are telling you the truth. So there have always been voices in my life, like teachers, often teachers that saw value in me and my writing and they would point it out. And, um, but often those negative voices tend to be louder, right? Mm -hmm. So I would just say, just when somebody does say something really good about you, listen and keep it, write it down if you need to, because those are the people that are speaking truth usually. Uh, as long as they're not just like flattering you, <laughs> you know, they're speaking the truth and that can be super valuable in helping you move forward. Like, don't just ignore those things. Listen to them. I would even, I would even add to that, even if they are flattering you, that God may be using them as a tool despite themselves, right? Yeah. 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 But I love that. So, okay. I think that's probably it unless, and I think those are all my questions, but okay. So I want to close in prayer and whether or not you have come to know the love of God or you can comprehend it or believe in him, I want to pray over you. So Lord Jesus, we just li li lift up um, these kids, mamas, whoever comes across these videos. And we just pray that they would receive the truth that they are a masterpiece, a priceless work of art, and they have an amazing purpose on the earth and that they were meant to shine and they're, they are a color on this earth that no one else is and we need you to step up and push past those lies and we pray that you bring people into their lives to be truth speakers and encourage them in jesus name amen amen so thank you so much and thank you guys for joining us and just be blessed have a great day